Skylum have just released a new update for Luminar Neo version 1.8, possibly their best update yet. So in this video, let's take a look at why I like it so much and what they've added to improve our user experience. So when you open up Luminar Neo, you'll be notified that there is a new version 1.8 and you'll be prompted to upgrade update to that new version. However, if you skip past that screen and you want to update at any point, what you need to do is come over to the top left corner of the screen where you see the Luminar Neo logo, come down to help, and there you're able to check for updates. And as you can see, we're running the latest version, Luminar Neo 1.8.0. So the first thing that's new, probably the smallest thing, but worth mentioning is we can now sort in our catalog via our raw images. So if we go to the showing all photos dropdown box here, if we click raw, you can now see that I've hidden all of my previously edited photos and everything that we see here is just the raw files. We can come back to switch to all photos. And now for example, we can see that this lighthouse has the raw version and also the edited version. And the same with this submerged log here that shows the raw file and the edited version that I put through Luminar's HDR merge tool. Okay, let me show you something really cool that they've just introduced. And it's a really great part of this update, something that we've been asking for a long time, and that is an intensity slider for the presets. Let's take a look. So if we open up any photo at random, we'll go for this one and I'll jump into the presets section. Let's just jump into the scenery section here. And currently on the screen, we can see the effect of clear and sharp, but watch as I bring my mouse down to fast fix, straight away, we get an interactive update. So as I move through these different presets, I can see straight away what they're doing for me. And if I want to see what it looked like before, I simply move my mouse away from the preset and we can see our before and after that way. But this is the really neat thing. Let's say I go for fast fix here. When I click it to apply it to the photo, we're now presented with this amount slider. So we can take that all the way down, bring it all the way back to 100. So now we're not just limited to an on or off state for a preset, we can actually specifically dial in the amount we want and that's really powerful. So I'm gonna just set this, let's say at 50%. And another really nice thing that Skylum have added to help us as users visualize what's going on is this before and after slider. So this one's pretty subtle. So let's go for something a little bit more strong like the clean and sharp, sorry, clear and sharp. And we can see our before and after. And it really is a nice bit of clever coding going on in the background here because I can actually come over and in real time just grab that amount slider, the intensity of the preset, change that. And as I do, we're actually seeing the update in this slider window. In terms of the user experience, I think that's a really nice addition to Luminar Neo. But what else is new? Well, there's something else that used to really bug me, and that was the omission of a histogram, not in the tool section, but when you actually moved over to the edits tab inside of that. So let me show you what I mean, because they fixed it and it's really good. So we'll jump into the edit section here, and as you can see, we see our histogram. And I'm just gonna get rid of that before after split screen for now. And I'm gonna press the J key so that we can see where we're blowing out our highlights. And if I jump into enhance AI, let's get a little bit more aggressive with this. And let's just do a nasty edit. So that's pretty easy to see exactly what's going on via our histogram up here. But what normally happens when we switch to the edits tab is that the histogram isn't visible anymore. At least that's how it was in version 1.7 and prior versions. When we jump into the edits tab here and we want to come back into the tools that we've already applied, we can make those changes and now we see in real time the update to the histogram. So that's a really nice improvement. And we can press J again to get rid of those highlights warnings. And if for any reason you don't see your histogram, just come again over to the Luminar Neo logo over here, choose view, and make sure that you have show histogram turned on. So as you saw, I just turned that off there. But to get it back, we come to the Luminar Neo title, come down to view, and at the very bottom, we can turn on show histogram. And there you go, it's back, both in tools and in the edit section. Now you guys know that I'm a big fan of making sure you're applying a camera matching profile to your raw photo before you actually start your edit. And in this update, I have been told, haven't tried it yet, so we're gonna look at it together. Skylum have actually applied a pre-visualization tool to allow you again on hover of the profiles, actually see what effect that is having on your photos. So let's take a look. Okay, I'm gonna open up a completely different photo. And again, we can see that I'm only showing the raw photos here. And we'll take a look at this lighthouse at Nugget Point in New Zealand. We'll go into the edit section, open develop raw because that is where our camera profiles live. And let's take a look. 
So currently we have the Luminar default profile applied, but what happens as I start moving over my camera matching profiles? Well, you can see straight away what a marked difference we have between camera landscape, camera flat, or yeah, if I move my mouse away, just like with hovering over the presets to change those, as soon as we move our mouse away, we go back to the original look. So I usually like to start my edits with a camera flat profile, which doesn't look very exciting, but it allows you to unlock a greater dynamic range in your photo or with the camera standard profile. And again, if I move my mouse away, we can see what a marked difference between the Luminar default, as you see now, and the camera standard. And I'm just wondering whether our split screen works for this as well. And absolutely it does. That's actually really cool. I'm very impressed with the fact that the developers have taken that slider approach and built it in for all of those before and after previews. I really like that. And I just want to show you one other thing, which again, I haven't looked at yet. It just appeared in the email of what the updates are. And that is a preview in the mood section. So if we open up the lookup table section here, let's just come into the cinematic toning. Ah, here we go. As I do the mouse over, again, we're getting a live update as to what this really powerful tool is able to do for us. So straight away, I know that the San Diego approach is gonna be enhancing that early morning glow that I have going on here. So straight away, I can see that. And I could also come in and have a little look at what other ones are gonna do for me. And I really can't stress enough just how much of a useful addition to the program this is, because I'm a really big fan of using lookup tables. It's an exceptionally powerful tool for controlling the colors, the contrast in your photos, and just giving it an overall finished look to it. So big fan of that, but often, Previously, it was a kind of annoying having to go into the menu, click on them individually, and then see what the effect was, go back into the menu, go into the options available, click on another one, see what that looked like. So this is a massive improvement. We can quickly come in, just work our way through these options and see in real time what effect they're having. And the fact that we can do that as a comparison to how it was originally, again, is really, really nice. And of course, with all of the updates, the Skylum developers are working hard to squash any of those nasty bugs that were there before and just improve stability and overall performance for us. And so far, everything's running really smoothly, which I'm loving. Now, there is another really useful preview tool that they've added into the program that we're going to look at together in just a moment. But before I go into that, there's something I just wanted to mention to you guys and I'd um denied whether or not I'd actually bring it up in a video, but I've been pretty quiet on how many videos I've been releasing of late. And um, I just gotta be straight up, I've been kind of struggling a little bit um, with my mental health recently. Um, and when I do these videos, I feel like I need to be quite, um, uh, quite bubbly and happy and hey, we've, this is new and let's look at this and edit this photo. You guys don't wanna see someone who's um, down in the dumps and um, I just wanted to let you know why my uploads have been a bit slower of late. So be patient with me. I'm working hard to get my head back in the game so that I can keep creating helpful videos for you guys. Because I haven't been posting very frequently, I thought I owed you guys an explanation and yeah, just shared that with you out, kind of out of the blue. But this is about the Luminar Neo update, not my updates. So what's the last thing I've got for you? Well, it's something I'm really excited about because it's been inside Photoshop for years and I use it all the time. And that is to do with blending modes and actually visualizing what's going on when we work with two layers together. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna come over to the plus icon just so that I can load in a texture over the top of this lighthouse. And Luminar's default is to drop that in with the normal blending mode and at 50% opacity. So I'm just gonna crank that all the way to 100 so that we can see exactly what's going on here. So as I move my mouse down over darken, multiply, color burn, etc., we can actually see in real time the resulting calculation of blending the two layers together with, for example, an overlay effect. So that's a really great way to actually visualize what's going on. So mathematically, yes, I understand what's going on with all of these, and I'm used to these different uh, blending modes. However, if you're not really sure or familiar with what they do, this is gonna be a really great way to just start getting a feel for how these blend modes work. 
because they can be a really useful addition to your creative workflow. So that's a really nice feature too. And if I close that down, I can see that I still have the ability to come in and do our split screen before and after as well. So that is a really nice way to actually visualize exactly where you've come from and where you've got to with your work. Obviously, prior to that, we still have the ability to use the backslash key on the keyboard, and that will send us to our original photo and then release to see what we've edited. But this split screen, along with all of those other additions to Luminar Neo 1.8, and I'm really impressed with this one, has to be probably my favorite update that they've done so far. If you don't have Luminar Neo yet and you like the look of it, Skylum are currently running their biggest sale that I've seen yet. It's their Easter sale where you can pick Luminar Neo up for a fraction of its usual cost. And if you use my discount code and the link in the description below, you can save even more as well. Beyond that, if you already have Luminar Neo, they've also got a load of assets, skies, textures, things like this that can actually help your creative workflow and you can include with your work. So well worth going and checking out. You guys get to save some money that way and I also get a small commission from that as well. So it's a win-win for everyone. Listen, I really appreciate you watching this video and I hope to be back with you very soon sat in this chair. We're gonna see how I'm going on personally, but um, that is my intention to be back with you very soon. But as I say, it's Easter, so for now, I'm gonna go and spend some time with my family who I promised that I would be with this weekend. So that's what I'm off to. Hope you guys have a great Easter too. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.